Hi folks, my name is Phil and welcome to Grounded, the series which looks at airlines of yesteryear. This episode will take a look at Casino Express. But first, a very quick history lesson. In 1959, two business partners, Todd McClaskey and Ed Peart, acquired the 89-room Thunderbird Motor Inn in Portland, Oregon, located along the Willamette River. McClaskey had plenty of experience in the hotel business and combined with Peart's construction background allowed the Thunderbird chain to grow quickly. As the Thunderbird chain expanded, they would brand their motels under the Thunderbird name and their full-service hotels under the classier-sounding Red Lion name. In 1982, Red Lion Inns would open a hotel in Elko, Nevada, located halfway between Salt Lake City and Reno. This hotel was in an ideal spot to catch gamblers heading for Nevada's second city of gaming. The hotel, which is now known as the Maverick Casino Hotel, was built next to Interstate 80 in prime position to snare passing gamblers. Unfortunately, gamblers being gamblers, they would often stop at the first casinos they encountered, those at the Utah-Nevada border, though some would just drive on by, opting to continue to Reno instead. Fortunately, the hotel was just over three miles away from Elko's regional airport, and this gave Todd McClaskey an idea. If he could bring in guests via air, they wouldn't be able to stop off en route. Well, unless they did a DB Cooper, but let's not get silly. Starting in the winter of 1986, the hotel would bring in tourists via air and then shuttle them to their casino resort. At first, Red Lion would simply charter flights from other airlines such as the Las Vegas-based Royal West, but it was eventually decided that having their own airline would be better in the long term. By having their own airline, they could control the schedules easier, as well as the onboard product, and keep the costs down by cutting out the middleman. The team of McClaskey and Pyatt's had sold the Red Lion hotel chain in 1984 for a reported $600 million. Pyatt's would briefly run a rival hotel chain before moving into real estate. McClaskey, despite being 72 years old, would stay on at Red Lion as the company's CEO. Due to the sale, it was decided to keep the airline operations separate from the hotel chain. Todd McClaskey established a holding company, TEM Enterprises, with the E being his middle initial, and would use the company to launch Casino Express Airlines in 1987. The airline acquired its first aircraft that September, a 17-year-old Boeing 737-200 which had made its first flight in 1970, and it was one of the original free aircraft used by Southwest Airlines when they began operations in 1971. Following its seven-year stint with Southwest, the aircraft would see service with Nigeria Airways, Spantax, Presidential Airways and most recently Midway, who had only held on to the aircraft for eight months before selling it to the new startup. Tem Enterprises and Casino Express didn't have any prior experience operating an airline, however, so they would use assistance from Spirit of America Airlines. Not to be confused with today's Spirit, this one was previously called IASCO and had experience in operating aircraft for new and inexperienced airlines. The arrangement was very similar to Airfoil over in the United Kingdom. They would operate aircraft for new startup airlines until they could obtain their own certification and licenses. The flights were technically charter flights rather than a scheduled service, so they could also circumvent a lot of regulatory red tape that more conventional airlines had to deal with. Red Lion Hotels would offer package deals for gamblers. They would travel on a Casino Express flight to Elko, stay at their hotel and casino resort for two or three nights, and then fly home again, in theory, a few dollars lighter. In the airline's early days, passengers were required to show that they had at least $350 on them for gambling purposes. The show money, as it was called, was to show that the passengers were serious about gambling. It was a fair deal, really, as Casino Express flight and accommodation packages could cost between $59 and $130 compared to the retail price of around $400. Part of this show money requirement was that the Casino Express passengers would spend at least six hours per day gambling at the Red Lion Casino or neighbouring Gold Country Casino, though I don't know how well this was actually enforced, particularly in the early days before the development of the Players Club, which could track guests electronically whilst also serving as a pseudo-frequent flyer programme for the airline. 
Another quirk of the airline was that passengers were not permitted to have any checked baggage, with the airline having strict size and weight specifications for passenger baggage. The restrictions on the baggage was reportedly due to Elko's airport elevation at over 5,100 feet, severely affecting the performance of the airline's 737. It should also be noted, though, that Casino Express didn't use any baggage handlers in an effort to keep their costs and airfares down. The luggage restriction shouldn't have been that much of an issue, though, considering that the gaming trips were supposed to be just for a few nights. Then there was also the button people. All Casino Express passengers were given a button with the airline's logo on it. The buttons, or badges, were all numbered and served two purposes. Firstly, they would help identify Casino Express passengers when they were gaming in the casino resort, helping prove that they were using that show money. Secondly, it would allow some fun and games on board the aircraft. Passengers would be invited to write down their button number on a dollar bill, which would then be collected by the crew and put in a bag. A crew member would then draw a dollar out at random, with the winning button holder claiming the prize pot. The Casino Express 737 visited a wide variety of places during its first few years. Phoenix, Miami, Oklahoma, San Jose, Seattle and even Vancouver with the aircraft going north of the border all to bring gamblers to Elko. The much larger and well-known capital of gambling, Las Vegas, would also see the occasional visit from the Casino Express 737. While Casino Express was a charter operation, compared to a more conventional scheduled carrier, it did publish its flight schedule so that potential customers could see when the Casino Express aircraft was in town. These were the pre-internet days of course, so Casino Express relied on newspaper advertising, travel agents and of course, mailing lists of existing customers. In June 1989, Spirit of America Airlines ceased operations. Despite trying to branch out by acquiring its own airlines, it lost a very big contract, running the airline operation of Emory Air Freight. Emory had recently been acquired by Consolidated Freightways, and it had been decided to merge its airline operation into its parent, rebranding as Emory Worldwide. The result of this loss of business led to Spirit of America closing down and leaving Casino Express without an operator. Tem Enterprises stepped in and took full control of the operation, gaining the required licenses and paperwork to allow Casino Express to operate. Part of this setup would see Tem Enterprise take ownership of the aircraft and sublease it to Casino Express. Future aircraft would also come via Tem Enterprises. As part of this change, the aircraft's registration was changed from November 709 Mike Lima to November 456 Tango Mike, with the TM standing for Todd McClaskey of course. Future arrivals would also be assigned the TM suffix. Todd McClaskey also officially retired from Red Lion and would focus his attention on expanding Casino Express. By the dawn of the 1990s, the Casino Express airline operation had reportedly earned the Red Lion Casino and Hotel Resort over $15 million since it began operations, remarkable considering that it had only been going for a couple of years. That said, the figure will no doubt factor in the money gambled away by visitors. Still, this was very impressive and showed that there was certainly demand for this little airline operation. During 1990, the airline's sole Boeing 737 was repainted into a much more striking livery, dubbed the King of Diamonds, and this livery left absolutely no doubt as to what Casino Express was about. This livery featured a white belly, green roof, and a red large and small yellow cheat line running onto the tail where they fitted together nicely with, well, the King of Diamonds. In June 1992, a second Boeing 737 joined the Casino Express fleet. This one was a 23-year-old model which had previously seen service with PSA, Air New Zealand and Presidential Airways amongst others. This aircraft was painted up as the Queen of Hearts, with red being the predominant colour. Initially, the Queen's profile had two eyes, however, it looked a little odd, so it was adjusted to a similar pose to that of the King. The Casino Express fleet would grow further in 1994 when a third 737 was delivered that March. It wasn't a jack though, it would be an ace, the ace of clubs. This aircraft didn't get to wear a vibrant livery like the King and Queen did. Instead, it had a predominantly white fuselage, blue belly climbing up onto the tail where the ace of clubs was featured as a tail logo. The aircraft didn't stay with the airline long as it left for AirTran in January 1995. 1995 also saw Casino Express revise their livery. 
both the King of Diamonds and Queen of Hearts, while retained on the tail, would see their fuselage livery modified in a similar style to that worn by the Ace of Clubs. Both would now have predominantly white fuselages, with green or red bellies respectively. Despite the toning down of the liveries, there was still no doubt as to who these aircraft belonged to, as Casino Express continued to plod on through the 90s. The Casino Express fleet more than doubled in 1999 when the airline took delivery of three more Boeing 737-200s, bringing their total fleet to five aircraft. The three new arrivals were all 1983 vintage, making them the youngest of the fleet, and all three had come from the Portuguese national airline, TAP. One of these aircraft would wear a special Red Lion Hotel and Inns livery, which consisted of a white fuselage, red cheat line and a red and black tail featuring a lion head. Personally, I think it looked a bit odd. The fuselage looked okay, but the tail didn't quite look right, and the lion head seemed very out of place, almost like it had randomly been stuck on by a child. Perhaps that sounds a bit harsh, but the lion head just didn't fit into the livery design as well as the king and queen. The aircraft was dubbed Red Lion 1, however, it would be affectionately known as Simba by crews. The other two new additions would wear a plain white livery with small Casino Express titles. One of these aircraft, however, would soon be painted into the rather smart livery of new startup airline, Tahoe Air. Tahoe Air was established in 1998 and would operate out of South Lake Tahoe Airport. The startup airline was in part supported by the local authorities who sought to bring in commercial airlines as the airport had been without a commercial air service since Reno Air left the airport two years previously. It was hoped that Air Tahoe would be able to bring in tourists and eventually draw airlines away from the much larger Reno 50 odd miles away. The startup airline was delayed getting off the ground however. The airline had intended on using McDonnell Douglas MD-80s, however, the type was still very much in demand and therefore harder and pricier to acquire. There were also lengthy talks with the various local authorities regarding their support packages and the airline's funding. The airline instead turned to Casino Express for support. They would use Casino Express in pretty much the same way that Casino Express had needed the assistance from Spirit of America in their early days, with Tahoe Air piggybacking on Casino Express's operations. Casino Express would operate flights on behalf of Tahoe Air, initially on one route from South Lake Tahoe to Los Angeles, with the inaugural flight taking place on June 25th. A second route began a few days later with San Jose seeing service on July 1st. The Tahoe Air project was short-lived, however, with the airline ceasing operations in October 1999. The sole Tahoe Air 737 was absorbed back into the Casino Express fleet, which was now standing at five aircraft. The dawn of the millennium saw a change in direction at Casino Express. The company had been using its white tail 737s on a number of charters for various organisations including sport teams, government agencies and other public and private groups. This, combined with a decline in the casino charters, saw Casino Express shift away from the gaming charters to focus more on the executive charter business. The King of Diamonds was forced into retirement in July 2000. The King had racked up close to 70,000 cycles since rolling off the production line 30 years earlier. With a very expensive maintenance inspection looming, it was decided to put the Casino Express flagship out to pasture in the deserts of Arizona. The King was given a great send-off, however, with Casino Express crews and ground staff adorning the aircraft with heartfelt messages. Just like in any royal family, the line of succession saw the Queen of Hearts take on the role of the Casino Express flagship. The Queen's reign was short-lived, however. She was soon painted into a plain all-white livery before being withdrawn in 2002. Red Lion 1 would be the sole remaining aircraft to retain its original livery. This aircraft would continue to be used on the original Casino Express gaming charter flights. The remaining aircraft in the fleet would instead be given a very smart but generic livery consisting of a white fuselage and tail with a red and black stripe running along the fuselage and onto the tail. It was generic for a reason though. It allowed the aircraft to be used on a variety of private charters for a multitude of customers as Casino Express continued to focus on that side of the business. One additional 737-200 joined the fleet in the spring of 2002 to replace the Queen and would also be put on private charter duties. On the 22nd of February 2003, Todd McClaskey passed away at the age of 91 after a brief illness.
Casino Express and Tem Enterprises would continue on as normal, with the company still being owned by the McClaskey family. However, in July 2005, the pair were sold. The new owners were CXP Management and the Avion Group, formerly known as Air Atlanta Icelandic. In October 2005, the Casino Express name was dropped, with the airline being rebranded as Extra Airways. The Boeing 737-200s were all phased out over the following months as more modern aircraft were brought in, but that story's for next time. Come back soon for the rise and fall of Extra Airways. If you have any comments, suggestions or criticisms, please do get in touch. If you don't have a YouTube doodah, don't worry, I've got a contact form on my website and I'm also on Facebook and Twitter. I have plenty more episodes in the works, so if you haven't already, why not subscribe to catch them as they land? And as always, thanks for watching.